Hello, you are looking at my Kimor 158 1941. I was in the middle of working on a project when the machine stopped working. The light comes on, but when I press the foot down, nothing happens. The first thing that I did was I opened up this foot control to make sure that it was still making contact with the little brass things in there. And it does still make contact and does still work properly. I also took out my multimeter and tested to see whether or not there was power getting to these cords. And there is. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with the foot control or the power cords. But yet this machine is just not working. So now I'm going to have to open up the machine check to see if the motor brushes are all good and then go from there really the motor brushes should not be worn because I just replaced them at the beginning of this year so I'm really curious to find out what the problem is and I'm actually not gonna lie to you I am super frustrated and annoyed with this issue because like I said before I was in the middle of working on a project so now I had to thread a different machine up to work on that machine which is not the ideal machine for the particular project that I'm working on. So without further ado, let's get into trying to figure out what is wrong with this machine. Right now I'm just removing the first motor brush so that I can see if it is okay. And it is a little worn, but it's still all right and can be put right back in the machine. Now I'm just checking the other motor brush that is on the other side of the motor. And already we can see that the motor brush coils are missing and that is a problem because it will not allow the motor brush to sit against the communicator so that it can make contact. I'm going to change out the motor brushes to see if it does in fact change the performance of this machine and cause it to work. In the meantime, if you haven't already, please do subscribe and tap that notification bell to receive updates. You gotta see this. Okay, so the only thing that I did was remove the broken motor brush. The piece of broken, other piece of broken motor brush is still down in there. I just put a brand new motor brush in and left the broken piece down in there. And that's really all that I did. And now look, it's working. So I suppose that was what the issue was. So now at least I know what the issue is and I can get back to sewing on my sewing project. But now I got a whole bunch of junk to try to clean up. So that's what I'm gonna do now. What I did, of course, is open up the machine, uh, open up those little mo motor brush ports. And I, of course, took a caliper out, turned it on, and then measured the diameter of the motor brush ports and got a motor brush off Amazon that was slightly smaller than my ports. Uh, and I did this so that the carbon brushes would fit easily down into the ports. Now, if you are unable to find a motor brush that is slightly smaller than your port, then you can either get it the same size or slightly bigger and then just use a piece of sandpaper to kind of sand that down. I do realize that some of you might have this problem with your sewing machine and find that your motor brushes are just fine and that that's not the problem. I have created a blog article over on my website listing in detail different issues that can cause your motor to not function on your sewing machine and also have presented uh, different solutions to that. So I will leave a link to that article down in the comment section below so you can go and take a look at it. But I'm also going to try to go over a few things with you here on camera so that uh, you can figure out what to do in order to get your machine working again. 
So if you don't have a problem with your brushes on your machine and those motor brushes don't need to be replaced, the next thing that you'll want to do is pull out a multimeter. You can get a multimeter pretty cheap from pretty much anywhere. I got this one from Harbor Freight as it's one of my favorite places to go for cheap tools. Uh, so you will set your multimeter to ohms and put it over here at 200 which is the lowest reading and you'll of course put the probes in here and here red goes there and black goes under calm and then you'll turn it on and it should automatically go to one then you'll put your probes together to make sure that your multimeter is working properly and you should get a reading of zero or close to zero. Mine reads zero one point eight. So that means that it's working. So the next thing that you will do is test your foot control to your sewing machine. And you will do so by taking the positive and negative probes and putting it up against one of the prongs at a time. And it's kind of hard for me to do this uh, one-handed while I'm trying to deal with a camera too. But let's see. So I get 0, 1.8 on here on that side and then on the other side I get 0 2.3 so this foot control is working but if you got a reading of 1 or negative 1 then it would mean that there was something wrong with this uh, foot control and that you either needed to replace the cords on it or uh, that there was some other problem. Now you have multiple different types of foot controls and believe it or not, this vintage uh, Singer button style foot control has the same mechanics as this Kenmore foot control on the inside. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what the inside looks like on that type of foot control. Let me just get this out of the way. So on the button style foot control and on this Kimmore foot control, this is what it looks like on the inside. It has this ceramic housing here and then a black thing right here and this little plunger here that's also attached to the other side of this black thing. I don't know technical names, but that's just what I call it. And then you have two little brass ends here. I hope you can see that. And when I press down on the foot control, this little plunger here rests against the brass things and this little black piece here gets depressed. And this black thing is actually pressing up against some carbon discs that are inside of this ceramic port. And the harder that the discs get pressed, and the harder that this presses up against these brass pieces, the faster the sewing machine goes. And what happens over time is sometimes this little washer here gets loose and then this guy no longer presses against these little metal pieces and it causes the foot control to no longer work. So what you will need to do is tighten this guy up. And then also sometimes this screw down here gets loosened up. So this is not no longer pressing against those carbon discs. And that also causes the foot control to no longer work. So you will just need to tighten everything up and then it should work perfectly again. There's one other type of foot control that is uh, popular in the vintage sewing machine world. I don't have it. Um, here with me at the moment but what i will do is try to find a picture to put up so that you can see it and i will just describe it to you so the next type of foot control that you find that is popular in the vintage sewing machine world is one where there is a series of these little uh springs and the springs all go in a row 
and when you press down on the foot control there's a little arm that goes across the springs and the more springs that get pressed down the faster that the sewing machine goes that one often runs into a problem when those springs become worn and you can easily replace the springs by going to your local hardware store and just purchasing some more springs and putting them in there um, however i generally do not like to replace the springs inside the spring type machines uh foot controls because those foot controls are metal and most of them are not grounded and uh, I ran into an issue with one of my sewing machines where it actually caught on fire. So I usually just recommend going and getting an electronic foot control in its place. Speaking of which, there is a third type of foot control and it is the electronic foot control. Usually it will say electronic like right here or on the back. But this one doesn't say it because it is an aftermarket foot control. Uh, once you open up the foot control, there is a board inside of here. It's usually like a green board. And that board has a ton of fuses on it. If one of those fuses is blown, then the foot control will no longer work. And you will need to desolder the blown fuse and uh, solder on a new fuse. If you don't know how to do that or if the fuses are no longer available, then you will need to purchase a brand new foot control. Nine times out of ten those fuses are hard to find and you usually cannot purchase new ones like on my Kenmore 1010 uh, there was a fuse blown and I searched for a new fuse for about a month or two and then I finally just broke down and bought a new foot control altogether the Bernina foot control is not cheap uh, I paid about a hundred dollars for this one but I guess it is what it is if you want to be able to use your machine there is one other issue that can go wrong with a sewing machine that would cause the motor to not function and that is if there is an actual issue with the motor itself. Usually I have found that on some sewing machines the communicator is dirty and needs to be cleaned. So what I usually do is take a lightweight piece of sandpaper like 1000 grit and sand the communicator off and then work on putting the machine back together and I also use an electronic cleaner on the bundle of bundle of copper wires that are around the motor spray that clean and use a microfiber cloth to wipe off any dirt or debris and of course on your older vintage sewing machines with a potted motor you have grease ports and sometimes the grease is all dried up inside of there and you will need to Clean all of that old grease out of there and replace it with new grease. And I would highly recommend not using a synthetic grease inside of a potted motor as those types of machines don't like that. Uh, there's a so retro grease that you can use inside of the machine that works well. It's quite expensive, but it does work. And some people do use a few other types of grease too, but... Um, I have really not tried anything else and I wouldn't recommend putting just anything inside of the machine. The next thing that I can think of is that the wires leading to the motor need to be replaced. If you know how to replace wiring then that's an easy thing but if not then you would definitely need to find somebody who is an expert in working with electrical wiring or who would know how to do it because you don't want to cause any fire hazards or have any issues with your machine uh, that's really all that i can think of right now i'm pretty sure that i did list some other things in that article and once again there's a link to it down in the description box below i thank you for watching my video and stay blessed thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe to receive more sewing related content peace